Okay guys, may I have your attention? Please, we are going to start off with IELTS speaking, sorry, listening. IELTS listening part 1. And uh, IELTS listening part 1 is the part where you must get 10 out of 10. Alright, no, uh, there should not be any mistake. You should get 10 out of 10 in IELTS listening part 1. And it's not a big deal. Like in part 1, mostly they give you one word only. So, uh, with one word only, you can easily achieve 10 out of 10. I mean part 1, part 2 and part 4. You need to pay extra attention and try your level best to get as many right answers as possible. Why? Because part 4 is also sentence completion. Part 1 is always sentence completion. So, sentence completion type is the easiest one. Okay. Uh, let's just take a start with part 1. Now, today, instead of playing it uh, question by question, I am going to play the audio for five questions together, right? And then we'll discuss those answers. And if you'll have any problem, then I'll play the audio second time like that. Uh, okay. Now, first, you need to see the question type. Complete the form below. On top, it's written complete the form below. So, this is what we call form completion type of questions. Uh, then they say write one word and or a number. So, you understand one word and or. And means one word plus number or means either word or number. Okay, it's just like that. Then they say uh, Megiquip customer details. Now, customer detail means there is going to be a dialogue between a customer and the agent or whoever the person is. So, that's what you got to write. Uh, example is given, but now they have removed the example. Now, there is no example anymore. So, audio will start and then it will continue. Otherwise, audio used to start. After some time, they would say the answer is winter that has been written in the space. Now, we should begin, but now they don't do this. Okay, very simple. Question number one is dash greening. Now, greening is the name. First name is missing. Last name is given. So, you just write first name. And if the name is unusual, they will spell it for you. Right? Next, we have address. Address dash York Terrace. Now, dash York Terrace, there can be a number. For example, 25 York Terrace. Terrace or it can be 64 A York Terrace. Clear? All right. Next, we've got question number three. They say delivery address. Now, address and delivery address, they are different. Delivery address is York dash 5 York dash. Now, 5 is not question number. 5 is the number 5 York dash. Now, after York, they will speak something. 5 York and then something. Payment method, very simple, dash in advance. Now, dash in advance means cash in advance, right? So, it's their payment method, cash in advance or something like that. Reasons for discount, address within the. Now, address within the, for example, uh, discount offer is for Lahore. Discount of offer is only for the people of Lahore. So, address within the... Now, yeah. Now, there is one more thing. When they use article the, it means there cannot be a proper noun. I mean, we cannot write the Lahore. We cannot say that, right? So, within the... Now, it can be within the locality, within the community, within the society, housing society. So, it can be something like this. Now, I play the audio, listen to the audio confidently, right, and try. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. 
Section 1. You will hear a woman who works in a furniture store taking a telephone order from a man. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon, Megaquip. This is Sally speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hello. Um, I'd like to order some items from your catalogue. Yes. Are you an existing customer? Uh, no. I've only just moved here from South Africa. But I picked up your winter catalogue in the city centre yesterday. Fine. The winter catalogue is our current one. As you're a new customer, I need to take a few details from you. Sure. Your name is? Oscar Greening. That's Oscar with a K. O-S-K-A-R? Yes. Greening. And your address? Um, York Terrace. Here in the city? Yes. What number? It's a flat. Number 52C. C. Got that. And would that be the same address for delivery? Um, no, actually. I'm out all day. But my neighbour can take delivery at number 5 York Avenue. It's just round the corner. OK, fine. Number 5. I've got that. And will you be paying by a debit card or credit card? Well, uh, I don't have any cards yet. I'll have some shortly, but I want these things this week, if possible. Uh, could I come to the store and pay cash in advance? Well, I guess so. I'll make a note. I'm afraid that payment method doesn't entitle you to a discount. No, I, I didn't expect one for that. But what about my address? It says on the cover of the catalogue... Oh, yes, you're right. Of course, York Terrace is within the city, so you get free delivery and 5% discount on your order. Oh, good. OK. Uh, question number one. Oscar. O-S-K-A-R. Well done. Question number two. 52C. Exactly. 52 number and C letter. Question number three. Avenue. A-V-E-N-U-E. -E. By the way, I will share the audio in the uh, class group, WhatsApp group. So you can just see it there. Uh, question number four. Cash, very good. And question number five? City. city, within the city. Well done. That's great. That's a nice start. And by the way, if you start well in part one, you get 10 out of 10. That gives you massive energy and confidence and positive feeling that can help you throughout IELTS listening. Right? So, you know, that feeling will come and all that. Okay, guys, questions six to 10. Complete the table below. Write no more than one word and or a number. Again, no more than one word. Uh, again, th they got this uh, Megaquip customer order. Now, we've got this table. And within the table, you can see they have item, catalog number, catalog section, color, delivery notes. So, item first is desk lamp. Catalog number is given. You just need to overlook that. After that, we've got catalog section. Now, the section is, uh, that's what question number six is about, catalog section. So, like you can see two sections are given, home office and commercial. So, it's going to be something like that. Now, what is home office? In home office, they are going to give you the things which are related to that. And uh, commercial means the commercial. So, it's going to be something like that. Question number eight, you can see, it's about color. Two colors are mentioned, one is slate, one is uh, gray. So question number eight is about a color. Question number seven, and by the way, audio will go according to question number. But you can read questions in any order. I mean, you can read like column wise. We call it column, yeah? You can read column wise. Uh, okay, then you can see we've got delivery notes. So question number seven is customer will. Customer will take customer will something like that okay and uh, by the way after will over here we will use first form of the verb 
it means the answer is going to be a verb right customer will uh, then question number nine item is desk lamp chair already mentioned and question number nine is filling cabinet two drawers with dash now it is something that comes with the drawers two drawers with dash two drawers with handle what else two drawers with come on use your imagination what is it that we have with drawers drawers have handles drawers have that's the answer okay so you have to switch on your imagination and you got to go deeper into that situation okay then we've got question number 10 delivery notes direct from london no later than no later than means it's a date no later than it's a date actually so they will mention the date and you can write it down now i play the audio you got to find the answers to questions 6 to 10. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So, what would you like to order? You have our current catalogue, you say? Yes, I need three things for the room where I study. My office, I guess. Um, the most urgent is a desk lamp. Is your catalogue number 664 in stock? 664? That's um, not home office. It's in the living section of the catalogue. It is. I want a small one that clips onto the edge of the desk. Yes, no problem. In which colour? I'd like the greyish coloured one, please. Oh, you mean the shade we call slate? Yes, it's a nice colour. And um, I wondered, could I get that when I come in to pay, rather than waiting for delivery? I really need to be able to read at night, and the lights in this flat are useless. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that'll be okay. I'll note down that customer will collect. What else did you want? Well, I need a chair which gives good support when I'm using my computer. I saw one in your home office section, and... I think it would suit me. It's on page 45, item number, oh, um, 129. Mm, yes. And it's fully adjustable, isn't it? Let me see. Height, yes. Back, yes. I'm not sure about the arms, though. Oh, that could be a problem. I'm very tall. What about 131 on the same page? That has adjustable arms, seat, everything. But can I get that in the same colour? I mean, the green, like the one it shows? Oh, they all come in the full range of colours. OK. So, I'll, I'll go for 131 in green, then. Hmm, I think you'll like that. My brother's very tall and he uses one. We can make sure there's one on the delivery van to you early next week. Oh, good. Thanks. And so, lastly, I need a filing cabinet for my documents. A little filing cabinet with two drawers. OK, two drawers. Do you want the ordinary one or the lockable one? It's an extra £20. Uh, sorry, what's that? You can have it with a lock, which is more secure. Oh, yes, please. OK, so that's number 153. It doesn't by any chance come in slate, does it? Well, it's similar. But the commercial office furniture doesn't come in so many shades. So it's grey? <laughs> That's right. Fine. That'll do. Now, about delivery. The two items will probably come at different times, as we have the chair in stock here, so our van will bring it, as I said. The filing cabinet will be coming direct from London, so... Today is the 29th of September, say not more than four days. That'll be delivered on or before the 3rd of October. You'll have them both within four days. That's fine. I'll drop in tomorrow morning to pay and get the lamp. Um, thanks for all your help. Thank you for your order. 
Let me know if we can do anything else for you. Thank you. I will. Bye. Bye. All right. So they were speaking in a very relaxed manner and all that. Uh, well, question number six. Living. L-I-V-I-N-G. Very good. Living. Question number seven. Collect. Very good. C-O-L-L-E-C-T. Question number eight. Green. Well done. Question number nine. Lock. And question number ten. Third October, exactly. See that later than. When we use later than, you cannot say later than four days. It would be within four days. So later than third October. Three October, and you can write date anyways. Three October, third October, October third, like that. Yeah. No, listen. If you write three R D, it is one number. Ordinal numbers and ordinal numbers. So, 3RD is one number. Okay? Yeah. Then, then it is correct. 3 October, 3rd October, October 3, October 3rd, 3rd of October. Yeah, that will be fine. But it is one word. So, 3rd October is okay. Alright, guys. Please now come to next page. Feeling alright? Yeah, confident? Yeah, see when you turn the page after section 1, there will be a smile on your face and you will be dancing. Eh? Looking around like Mr. Bean, hi, I got 10 out of 10 in section 1, okay? Yeah. Alright, now we carry on. Please, listening section 2, questions 11 to 20. Uh, questions 11 and 12. Now, this is very important. In section 2, you usually come up with something like this. Choose two letters. Uh, over here, two things are important. Number one, the question. Question says, which two things make the museum unusual? Now, what is unusual? They only have that. Others don't have that. Okay, so out of five things, two things make the museum unusual. Otherwise, for example, if they say guides, Say, well, as you know, in every museum, there are the guides and it is not anything special, but we especially run some events and that is a specialty or that is what others don't offer. Now, that is what others don't offer. That is unusual. So, for unusual, they might use the word especially, special, we only have that, we specialize in it, something like that. Now, you got to listen. They will talk about all five options in any order. The first thing is you need to see about which option are they talking. The first thing you are going to do, never read article in multiple choice. What is article? The. Now you can see, I mean, there are two ways of reading it. One is which two things make the museum unusual? A, the guide. B, the events. C, the animals. Right, one way is this and second way is which two things make the museum unusual? Guides, events, animals, buildings, objects. So this is faster and better. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah, don't read question number like A, B, C, D. Just focus the words. So first you will see in the audio, are they talking about guides first or they may start from objects. So you got to see if the objects are unusual. Very special. They say, we have a collection from 17th century. We have some uh, relics from uh, 13th century, something like that. That is how, I mean, the language will tell you that this is unusual. Next, questions 13 and 14. Choose two letters. Which two things can visitors do at the museum? Now, when they say, which two things can the, muse, uh, can the visitors do at the museum? It means out of five things, two things visitors can do and three things they okay. cannot do. They are not available. They are not there. Visitors cannot. For example, buy homemade bread. Now, if they say, well, we used to offer homemade bread because our cook has got married recently and he's gone to another town, so we don't offer that. So, it means A is a trap. We call it distraction or we call it trap. 
then they talk about ride a horse say yeah you could ride a horse but our horse is suffering from flu so you cannot do that just mazakaro right so you need to see their tone out of five things two things you can do means they are available and other things are not available is that clear so uh, by the way for a homemade bread b horse c tram d couples of original posters okay couple mean like two posters not that couple that you are smiling couples of original posters uh, then buy copies of original posters sorry yeah copies not couples i'm mistaken go down a coal mine so coal mine original posters tram horse homemade bread now i play the audio and all four questions you have to answer and by the way for 11 and 12 these are two questions so two marks you will get that is the end of section 1 you now have half a minute to check your answers try to make it forward brampton focuses on life during the 19th century it's going to start now now turn to section 2 As you can see, Brampton is an open air museum. The first open air museums were established in Scandinavia towards the end of the 19th century, and the concept soon spread throughout Europe and North America, and there are several in Britain, all of which tell the history of a particular part of the country. Brampton focuses on life during the 19th century. The site was chosen because there were already some historic 19th century buildings here and others have been dismantled in different parts of the region and rebuilt on the site. This hadn't been attempted before in these parts, so we're very proud of what we have here. All of the buildings are filled with furniture, machinery and objects. You may be able to see these in other museums, but not in their original settings. What also sets Brampton apart from other museums is that the story of the exhibits is told not by labels but by costumed staff like myself. I look after sheep, cows and hens which are much the same as those you see on modern farms but I use traditional methods to care for them. You will also be able to see a blacksmith and a printer as well as other crafts people. If you talk to them, you'll be able to find out what life was really like 150 years ago. Our program of activities during the year has guided walks, an agricultural fair, and all the other events you would expect a museum to have. But remember, here you experience them in the real surroundings. The site is divided into different areas. The main building contains our high street, which is a street of 19th century shops, offices and some homes. There's a stationer's shop which sells a range of specially selected cards, prints and copies of Victorian stationery, all available for purchase by visitors. Upstairs in the same building, a printer demonstrates the production of posters, business cards and advertising material. Across the street from the stationers is a clothes shop and there's a baker's where you can watch a demonstration of someone making bread, cakes and pastries. We also have a sweet shop which has old fashioned sweets for sale. Vintage trams travel along from one end of the street to the other carrying visitors on their journey into the past. We will also be visiting the farm and taking a ride on a steam train. Of course, the main form of transport in those days was the horse, and you can watch horses being exercised in the old stables. This part of Britain was famous for coal mining, and on the site we have part of a mine which opened in 1860 and was worked for over 100 years before closing in 1963. Visitors can put on a hard hat and take a guided tour underground to see how coal was worked and to experience the working conditions in the early 1900s. 
All right, they twisted a lot. Yeah, talked about all the options and 